Hi everyone, it's uh, come up to one o'clock in the morning. It's the 1st of March and it's a very cold, very snowy 1st of March. Um, yeah, Britain has been bashed by snow. And uh, I know people poke fun at us because every time we get a little bit of snow, which Really, it is a little bit of snow compared to other places around the world, you know, like what Canada get and um, parts of America and whatnot, you know, it's relatively small compared to that. But because we don't get it frequently over here, it's not an every season thing, you might get a little bit if you're lucky, like a little. Like a dusting like you would get on some cakes, you know, where they dust it with icing sugar. You might get that if we are lucky. Which is why we are so sceptical when the weather says, you're going to get snow. But anyway, we have had enough snow to cause quite a lot of havoc, you know. And I think because it happens so infrequently, we're just not prepared for it, you know. A lot of public transport just haven't made the investment because it happens so infrequently it's nine times out of ten it's just not needed so they don't invest in it so when it does snow like this it causes problems even the roads a lot of roads despite gritting and plowing um yes there was enough to have the snow plows fed to the gritter trucks you know, a lot, especially back roads and roads in and out of villages, a lot of them have been closed because you just can't get a car down them. You might in a 4x4 if you're lucky. Um, but yeah, it's been just been total havoc, basically, especially today. We've had it since Monday, on and off, just light showers, but last night was the worst. That's when it actually hit... And we could get some more according to what I've seen on Facebook. But I'm a bit sceptical on that. I think the worst of it has hit. And I hope I am right. <laughs> I mean, I can't actually go on my bike out there. I tried it yesterday morning at 9 o'clock. And it wasn't compacted because, you know, a lot of people just looked out the window and thought, Nope, not going to work. You know, or they try and get the car out of the drive and they just sit there wheel spinning until they give up. So the roads were dead quiet, so there's still a lot of soft snow on the roads. I was slipping all over the place on that stuff. Now it's been compacted, so it's all just, you know, like an ice rink, basically. I'm not riding on that. <laughs> been there, done that one, pissed off the bike, never done it again. So uh, I'm kind of stuck unless I go walking in the town tomorrow, which I think I'll have to do because I don't have studded tires. I really should. Perhaps I should make a set of studded tires because you can actually do that. Anyway, I've got that thing there that I've got to fix for someone. I actually have no idea who. I was just contacted by a lady I know said she's got a bike that needs fixing for. For a him, that's all I know. It's a him that owns it. Uh, but uh, it's not actually looking too bad. It really could do with a good clean and a few new parts, really. But because it's a shame the frame is in brilliant condition, it's just the rest of it is knackered. The f suspension forks are shot, they've just rusted up solid, they won't even budge. And I've soaked them in WD 40. Uh, so I uh, stand still on that would have done some more today but Nemo bless him had a seizure right uh, right there actually in that sort of area um, I had a friend of mine over because he was over yesterday as well and he helped me sort out the outside cupboard and downstairs shed so I could actually get more bikes in the shed so I took some my traffic cones all my little traffic cones like these are now in here up here 
you know, ordinary people would keep household items in there, you know, like perhaps a spare TV or something. Mean, nah, traffic cones and barrier planks and whatnot. <laughs> anyway, I did that just so I could get more bikes in the shed because I had quite a few outside and I didn't want, you know, Victory Housing complaining. Or someone complaining to Victory Housing and they come and complain to me. So I just thought, you know, before that happens, just deal with it. So I have. But yeah, my friend was over again today with a friend of his who had a puncture in his front wheel. And I'm sitting exactly here fixing the front wheel. In fact, I was just waiting for the patch to dry. And I, I can't actually remember. I think I was just laying back on the bed like that, just sort of chilling. Well, him and his friend were just, you know, messing around there and we were just generally chatting. And suddenly he goes, your cat's having a fit. And I thought he meant he was having his usual, you know, hissy fit running around the flat. I'm sure most people who have owned, a, who own or have owned a cat or a dog know exactly what I'm talking about. It just seems to be something they do. Just purely at random, they have one of those random moods on where they just charge around the flat. Or your house. And the dogs will bark and the cats meow and computers make noise as well apparently. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's what I thought he meant. And I, I must have said something because he then said, no, he's having an actual fit. A seizure, he said. So I sat up and looked and he was right. <laughs> It was really weird. I can't describe what he did first. It's hard to explain, but he was doing this weird sort of thing as if, you know, some, like, well, as my friend described it, like he'd been hit in the head with something. That's what he thought. Something had hit him in the head and that hurt. Um, but next thing we know, his mouth is wide open. He's drooling everywhere. And he's laying on his side, with both front and back legs just kicking and flailing around. And, you know, just like as if a human being had had a seizure as well. It's exactly what it was like. So we just sort of cleared as much room as we could. And we could only let him, you know, wait to earth. It felt like it lasted for a long time, but it didn't. You know, I, I can guarantee it only lasted about a minute. It was relatively short, but still... That's got to be the scariest fucking thing I have ever seen any animal do. And if it's that scary for an animal to do, I'd try to think what it would be like witnessing a human, you know, because you can't do nothing to help them. There is nothing you can actually do apart from make sure they don't hurt themselves. Because they say, don't hold them down, don't try to stop them flailing around, just try to make sure they don't bang themselves on any furniture. You just feel so helpless, you know. So uh, I took him to the vet. Me and Mum took him to the vet. Uh, I've got to pay £60 tomorrow for the um, blood samples. Because I'm going to test to see if it was either his kidneys or his liver. Because apparently, I don't know if it works in... Humans or other animals, but in cats, in this case, apparently something wrong with the liver and kidney can cause a seizure. Um, it might not be. I think the chances are, because he's 11 years old, pushing 12. Oh, that must have been outside. So, I'm thinking the age is bringing on epilepsy, and I think that's what the vet thinks. But I'd rather pay that money, get the bloods tested... So I can either confirm or rule it out, you know. Just, it put my own mind at rest. So I'd rather I didn't say no to the bloods and then sit here, you know, worrying. Is it his organs? Are, are his organs starting to go wrong? But he's up here. He's on my coat. The only reason he's up here tonight is because the radiator's been on. But, uh, yeah, he's... He's been acting all night as if nothing ever happened. <laughs> Which indicates a seizure. Again, if it was a stroke, 
he would have had, you know, mobility problems, neurological problems, which he hasn't, so we can rule out stroke. But uh, also, we also got the vet to check his teeth because he's got a lot of teeth problem, and the bad breath has come back, and he's got a lot of plaque and dirt build up on his teeth. Um, so the dentist said once we've got this seizure thing settled, we can then I can then take him back later and they'll do the dental work to take out any rotten teeth or anything. Well, she actually took one out inadvertently today. I don't think she intended to do it, but it was the fact she was scraping at the plaque on his teeth, trying to break some of it off to make it a bit more comfortable for him. She did that on one of his teeth, just a flick like that, and his whole tooth fell out. Just, boom, oh, bonk. <laughs> Oh, that did worry me because it took ages for that bleeding to stop. Even when he was here, an hour later, I had the tissue and I was like that, mopping the blood from his mouth. It stopped now. And that'll heal up, you know, he'll just have... Get my hub's done again. That's what it does at random. And I was always told, well, that's because, I don't know if all hubs do this or routers, but... Apparently it's when they automatically update the firmware. See, I don't know if all providers do that, but BT does. I'll just flash like that and I'll get my internet back. It's no big worries. Like I said, it usually does those sort of early hours in the morning. Sometimes during the day. But it's rare. Usually it's at this sort of time in the morning, maybe sort of around 2 o'clock in the morning. It'll randomly just restart itself. That's all the hub's done. But it's not a frequent thing either, so... I'm pretty certain it is just because BT automatically update or the hub automatically updates its firmware. Right. So, fun and games. It's costing me money. It's the equivalent to my phone bill, which is why I went for it. I thought, yeah. You know, the price is the equivalent to what I'd pay on my phone bill, so a little bit more, but... <sighs> it looks like my buddy's uh, got himself a job, but it's a caring job, and obviously that requires training and whatnot. And uh, due to lack of funds, he had to sell the computer that we built him. He did keep it for quite a while, but it's just a fact, you know, he said, we needed food, needed money, something had to go. And he's actually a bit miffed, because, you know, he's actually got pretty much nothing at the minute. <laughs> he had to sell it. So I've given him a little Windows XP machine, one of my old Dells, actually. To help him out. No doubt if he can find something better I'll end up with it back. Because I don't think the shop in town would take something that old anyway. So uh, he's using that at the minute. I've been playing around with this one. I want to get Wi-Fi working on it but none of the uh, Wi-Fi devices I've got are going to work because I can't find the drivers. There's two PCI cards I've thrown in the bin because I just can't find drivers online for them, they're just obsolete. Uh, so I just thought, well, there's no point keeping them. Uh, then there's a USB one. Again, Google search showed there just isn't any support out there for it. So but I'm going to keep that because I'm going to open it up. I'm going to make some short videos where I open up random electrical objects. If I can find enough. They're not going to be a frequent thing, it'll just be as and when I come across something that I can take apart. Basically. <laughs> that I think is um, interesting. Printers, not so much because they're a pain in the ass. You get covered in ink. Yeah, so I don't think I'll do PC printers. I've done computers technically could do a laptop, but don't think I've actually filmed myself working on a laptop. What another tab I want to close?
lose it. I came back in here for something, I can't remember what it was. I can't blame that on door hinges because I don't have any internal doors. <laughs> but for, well, yes I can, I can blame it on the bathroom door. It's a ghost. I didn't just break wind on camera, it's, it's a ghost moving my bathroom door. <laughs> and if you'd believe that, you would believe anything. Right, um... Yes, I've brought my phone in here because if I'm asleep or I'm lazing around in bed because I can't be bothered to get up yet, you know, I'm just letting myself wake up. Chances are I'd ignore the phone when it rings, but I've uh, brought the phone through here, so it'll be right near my ear. It's a big bee, that's what I'm going to blame it on, big bumblebee. Um... I have, well I didn't think I was going to be paying a vet's bill for some blood samples, but Ooh, I screwed up this in smell of vision Ooh. Anyway, bought myself another lamp. A fellow collector has actually, because um, he runs a big business, well, selling various flashing lights like those, both for civilian use and the emergency services. LED ones mostly nowadays and some rotaries like those. That's how I got those because they're decommissioned ones. <clears throat> As in the magnetic ones do not have a cigarette lighter plug on so they cannot be used. And in fact that very top one I've taken the magnets off as well. <coughs> uh, but different accounts who's got basically one for business one for leisure sort of thing. Um, and he put four, what we call Tildon lamps, like these ones up here. If my finger's in the right place, I can't quite see. They're somewhere there, next to the one that looks like a giant orange lollipop. Them two. He's put four of those up <clears throat> with blue lenses. Um, they're decommissioned fire service equipment. Um, I think actually, yeah, they're a bit scruffy and marked because obviously they've been used. Um, but you put four up, and I decided to buy one because he's got them up at a fair price, in my opinion. Fifteen ninety nine is all it cost me, which for a Tildorn Guardsman is damn cheap. I've seen them go for thirty five pounds plus on eBay, which is why I was actually surprised he didn't put them on for a bit more, but. So, I treated myself to that, because they're not easy to come by, those blue ones, so... It might have some marks and whatnot on it from use, but I don't care about that. I'll clean it up as best I can. So... But that plus £3 something postage, it might get here next week with the weather. <laughs> See if he can post it. <laughs> the bloody weather's causing havoc. It's because we're not prepared for it, that's why. It happens, or snowfall like this happens so infrequently, you know, it's so seldom that we just don't prepare ourselves for it, you know. We don't get winter tyres, we don't go and get huge stock of shopping in and whatnot, you know, nothing like that, we just, <laughs> so, we're, we're unprepared, we're not prepared for it, same with um, a lot of businesses like in public transport and whatnot, for the same reasons, you know, they don't invest in anything because I suppose to them from a business standpoint it happens so rarely that there's, it's just not worth the financial investment but the only problem is when it does happen it causes chaos <laughs> that is the only issue uh, you know if we were Canada it would just you know just be another day because Canadians are used to getting the snow 
a lot of parts of America are used to getting snow this time of year. Britain? No. <laughs> you know, I'm sort of restricted to feet at the minute because I'm not riding a push bike on that. You can sit on that and spin. I tried that yesterday morning. That was not fun. <laughs> Although someone was having fun on a quad bike. It sounded like someone was having great fun on a quad bike, actually. <sighs> I'm wearing my battery out, but I want, want to get a vlog out there. I haven't done one for a while. Or have I? I can't bloody remember. <sighs> I might be going, sh well, had that unexte uh, unexpected. Unexpected vets bill, but that is what comes from or comes with owning a pet or caring for a pet. I don't like saying owning a pet because I don't feel like I own him. If that makes sense, you know, I don't see him as property. I see him as my friend. I think a lot of pet owners will probably agree with me. You know, he's. He's my little buddy, you know, he's my little fluff ball. And I will admit afterwards I nearly sat and uh, cried once he'd recovered. I was actually so scared I was going to lose him. Because that was, that was scary to watch, it really was. And afterwards, you know, when he just sat there unable to walk without staggering because he was so disorientated from it. You know, and he's sort of just sort of looking around, dazed, basically. Like, I have, you know, where am I, what happened, sort of look. But yeah, he's down here, he's sleeping. I have actually got some stuff for him. But I've been instructed to use it only if he has another seizure that lasts longer than five minutes or he has a seizure comes out of it and goes back in or another one comes out of it goes back in in rapid concession like that um, but I can't remember where I've put it it's in a nice silver packet <laughs> so much shit and crap and junk and ugh. Here's Diazepam. Rectal solution. That's what I've got to use. Yeah, I've got to shove it up his ass. But uh, I suppose when he's having a fit, he isn't going to notice, really, is he? he? I'm just thinking, how the hell am I going to hold down a seizing cat? And stick that up his ass at the same time. <laughs> That's what actually worries me. Um, hmm. I hope I don't have to uh, do anything like that. You know, she just gave it to me just in case, sort of thing. See, if you have a pet, you've got to be prepared to pay the vets. So I guarantee at some point you will need them. If you don't ever need to take your pet to a vet, I think you're bloody lucky. I mean, he's an indoor cat. That's why we could rule out things like antifreeze, because apparently antifreeze is a chemical that can make cats seize or have a seizure. So, but because he's an indoor cat, you know, he's not exposed to anything like that. Um, I don't think WD-40 or anything like that is going to do it. Besides, I've been here eight years and I've always used WD-40, so... If it was going to be that, that would have happened years ago, I think. So I'm pretty certain there's nothing in here that would have done it, not chemical-wise, anyway. So it's either got to be an organ, which we'll find out from the blood results or epilepsy and she, the vet did say she said um, that oh as cats or any animal I suppose get older 
they can develop epilepsy. Epinalepsy. Oh, that cannot be a nice thing to live with, not even for a human. <sighs> Tell you what though, he was good as gold, because I don't have a cat carrier, I don't have a cat basket or anything. And he uh, sat in my arms. He let me carry him all the way down the stairs, all the way to the end of the block to the car. He sat in my arms in the car without struggling, you know, not trying to get away from me or anything. And he sat in the vet, good as gold, and he didn't really like the vet flicking his teeth out of his mouth. Though. <laughs> but he only hissed. He didn't go for her with the claws or anything. He didn't try and bite her. He only hissed. I have never known a cat as placid as he is. Even when there's a vet, you know, poking around in his mouth and whatnot, he was still placid. <clears throat> and um, even the vet said the same thing. I shouldn't think it's that common, you know. He's he's one in a million. I'll never, ever, ever come across another cat like him, I don't think. Not in my lifetime, anyway. He's definitely one in a million. And if you ask me, would I get another one after he's gone, I really don't know. It, if I ever got another pet, be it a little dog, like like a Jack Russell, like Mum's got, or another cat, it would be a while. It would be a while. Because I know some people say no, because they don't want to go through that pain at the end again. Bless him. Uh, he was laying on my laptop bag. That's why I put my coat down there. Coat's more comfortable. And he likes my coats. But I've have noticed... I know I'm rambling about him. I can ramble for the Olympics. If there wasn't a gold medal for rambling, I'd probably win it. Anyway, his breath actually smells a darn sight better just from the vet accidentally removing that tooth. <laughs> I'm pretty certain she didn't mean to actually do that. You know, because she was actually she was just showing us, you know, that there's plaque on the teeth and she was just going like that and it's a boing. Tooth gone, problem solved on that side. <laughs> and it's just as bad at the back on the other side as well, so. But she did get a chunk of plaque off that one, which might help. I should think that's very nice. I'm waiting for my battery to start flashing. <laughs> <sighs> I've just realised what my friend was doing with my Lego figures. <laughs> I knew he was playing with the Batman figure, but I had no idea he'd done this. <laughs> ah, what will I do with him? He is, he is one of those sorts of friends where he is utterly annoying at times. But he's still a good friend to have, you know. I mean, he's got me think He's thought of me when he's seen things, you know, and got me things. And I help him out with things like the bikes and whatnot. The problem is I can't help him with a decent computer at the minute because I am out. I'm just, I'm fresh out. <laughs> All what I've got left is very little or just old tat basically like windows xps 98s 2000s and 95s <laughs> and all that anyway i'm gonna stop rambling i might have a little play on my summer car i don't know yet um but anyway thanks for watching i hope you stuck through this video nemo is doing well
We'll find out the blood. Let's hope the blood tests are clear anyway. Because I think epilepsy I could live with. But actually, on that subject, the vet did say if it's infrequent, his fits, then they wouldn't treat the epilepsy because the side effect of the drugs they use to treat it in animals can damage the liver. Um, so they only like to treat it if it's a regular thing. So if it's infrequent, then they wouldn't treat it. Because it'll do more harm than good, basically. Which is understandable, and I, I totally agree with that. But anyway, I'm going to disappear before I ramble on any more and fall asleep holding the camera from rambling. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will talk to you all again in the next video. Bye. Bye. Always went a little squeaky. Bye.